since I've been doing Miller Corner, I've met some incredible people and seen some awesome cars. But sometimes I see one particular case that deserves a spot in the limelight. And this one, I just couldn't ignore. Hello you lot, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again and a quick bit of admin if you do notice the slightly different surroundings today because this is in fact the first video I'm recording on camera from my new place. Since I moved out of home I moved to my own place to start my new job, my dream job. I'm now here, I've been living here for about a month. No, you're not getting a house tour, this isn't MTV Cribs. Anyway, a few months back I got a message on Instagram and no, it wasn't from single people in my area and no it wasn't from a Nigerian prince relative offering me my inheritance it was in fact from a Polish guy called Tomas he's been watching my videos on YouTube for a while after finding me through all the Sacento stuff I've done and he had an awesome project on his hands that he's been working on for years he messaged me told me a bit about what he's done and I have to share it with you because it's frankly incredible. About 10 or 11 years ago, Thomas wanted to make his own car. He wanted to make something different, something stand out, something special. But there just wasn't anything he could do with an existing car that he felt was truly an extension of what cars meant to him. So he decided, if I can't do something to an existing car that really kind of fulfills what I want, why not make my own? So that's exactly what he did. Using 3D modeling software, Thomas actually intricately designed the body shell for his own car and from that he then designed the chassis himself as well a tubular space frame chassis that will be the structure for the entire car give it its strength but also be relatively simple to put together he then gave all the dimensions all the measurements all the models to a friend of his who can weld and fabricate who welded the chassis up for him. Unfortunately, this does create some issues legally. As incredible of a thing it is to do to make your own chassis, to make your own car, Poland's road registration law for new cars means it wouldn't be road registerable. You can't make your own chassis and make a brand new model to go on the road in Poland. However, what you can do is if it's using the existing components of an existing roadworthy car, you can simply register it as that model. So, because they're cheap, they're plentiful and they're really easy to work on he decided to base his car which he later called the Cosmo on a Fiat Seicento because they were made in Poland for years they are all over the place and could be bought for peanuts. Originally the car was even powered by an 1108cc Seicento engine because that way it can be completely homologated as a Seicento. Thomas then had to start thinking about the intricate little details. For example the interior. Anyone can throw together a space frame shell, put a bucket seat in it and away you go, but you want to actually make it something that's actually something you can sit in and there are controls for the heater for the stereo guess what he opted for the dashboard from a Seicento he felt that it fitted the design for the car perfectly and he designed the measurements for the interior around using one in the first place because of the shape of it because of the size of it it just worked conveniently the list of parts for the Cosmo is eclectic and if you're into Italian cars you're gonna like his spec sheet Seicento steering rack and brake booster Fiat 125 P hubs, Stilo front brakes, Alpha GTV door frames, Seicento door handles and Seicento gauge cluster. Elsewhere the rear brakes are from a V6 Alpha 159 and the rear struts are actually Seicento front suspension. The power plant meanwhile is the 1.4 T-Jet from an Abarth 500, mated to a Seicento 5 speed gearbox and all controlled by an ECU Master EMU standalone. Even the glass is repurposed. The rear window is, you guessed it, from a Seicento, while the windscreen comes from a Fiat Coupe. Unfortunately though, it hasn't all been plain sailing. Since Thomas started the project 11 years ago, the rules on road registration have changed, and particularly now he's changed the engine out to the Abarth 500 T-Jet, the Cosmo isn't possible to be registered in Poland. It certainly isn't a Seicento anymore, and obviously it doesn't look or drive like pretty much anything else. So does that mean the death of the project? 
Absolutely not, because whereas Poland doesn't allow your own car to be registered, the UK does. So the plan is he wants to get the car registered here. He's working on all the fine little details of it, and later this year, Tomas is gonna trailer the Cosmo all the way from Warsaw, where he lives, all the way to the UK to get the car officially and legally registered and get number plates on it. The first time he took it to the UK to have it looked over, they picked up on a number of things that a road legal car in this country can't have. Even little things like the speedo. When the car was inspected, Thomas was using GPS as the speedo on the custom designed digital dashboard. But unfortunately, once again, because obviously GPS signals can drop out in tunnels and things like that, you're not allowed to have a GPS GPS speedo, it has to be driven off of a speed sensor somewhere. So he took the whole assembly apart and created a speed sensor so it is now accurate to how fast the wheels are turning, whether it's got a GPS signal or not. Even things like the fact the wipers have to cover a good enough area of the screen, that the windscreen washer's got to cover a good enough area and actually point in different directions, the headlights have got to work, be balanced and not move around too much, they've got to be at the right height for road legal reasons. All these things that you and I haven't had to think about ever because we haven't made our own car. The amount of work in the Cosmo is immense and you can start to understand why it's taken Thomas so long to get the car to where it is. Long term Thomas wants to get the car over to the UK, get it road registered and then from there he can look at making these available to buy. He wants to make kits of them so people can build them as components from the ground up like a Caterham for example and he wants to make a couple of whole cars so people who don't have the time can just buy one off the shelf to then immediately go and drive and when they do I think they're gonna have a wicked time of it this thing has had so much time and effort and thought put into it intricate little details that you don't think about have been sorted out and the car genuinely performs epically on track he's been on TV with it he's been in magazines numerous YouTube channels have done stuff with him Thomas has created a wicked little project in the Cosmo and when it turned up at the Italiano Squadro weekend it was poured over by people who had no idea what it was but were deeply deeply excited by the fact that a humble little Fiat Seicento can turn into this wicked little sports car something different something interesting and something that he's poured his heart and soul into to for the last decade. This, for me, is what cars are all about. Doing something you love, creating something you dream of, irrespective of whether it makes any sense in any way. And I love the fact that one man's crazy idea is very nearly a reality. The future for the Cosmo then is bright. The project is nearly finished, there's a few little things to do, and then the car will be ready. And then, I think we need to have it back because frankly this whole project and the guy who made it are incredible. Thomas, I doff my cap to you my friend. You're a madman but I love your car. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll leave links in the description to all the social media for the Cosmo so you can go and learn more about the project and see this wicked little thing in action. I love this thing and if you're watching this YouTube channel then I reckon you will as well. Thanks for watching everybody. Catch you soon. And have a good one.